Hello, and welcome to another episode of Did You Know? I'm Heather Farley, TSA historian, and with me, as always, is Caroline Argrave, our archivist. Heather, what's this behind us? This is the voluntarily abandoned property art installation at TSA headquarters. It was created by Jacqueline Benner in partnership with members of TSA. Everything behind us was intercepted at our checkpoints and was abandoned at Dulles International Airport. The TSA team hand-selected each piece from a collection of over 800 items. So this is where all those wine bottle openers ended up. Maybe, but today we're talking about more than just bottle openers. We're uncorking some of the stranger property that was abandoned at a checkpoint. Didn't I read something about a live python and a computer hard drive or a hundred or so live eels in someone's luggage bag once? Yes, and several people's cats somehow make it into their carry-on bags every year. But no animals today. Much like the wall behind me, there's quite a bit of what you can and cannot bring. Let's take a look at some of the cannots. Team and I are back in the studio with a slew of voluntarily abandoned property from our collection. Oh, hey, Heather. Nice to meet you. (laughs) You know, so some sharp objects are okay to bring, like scissors, for example, but they have to be less than four inches from the pivot point. And you can also bring your knitting needles. So you're telling me I can't bring this? (laughs) Exactly. That would need to be in a checked bag, or better yet, leave it at home. But some of these are a little sneaky, like this key It's actually a knife. Yeah, and what's going on with this cross? It's a knife too. (laughs) All these knives are a no-go through the checkpoint. Okay, so of course knives make sense, but what's wrong with these? Firearms are obviously not allowed through the checkpoint. You can travel with a gun, but it must be unloaded and locked in a secure case in your checked luggage. This also includes parts of the gun and the ammo. (laughs) Yup. And including anything that looks like a gun, so no replicas either. So they definitely should have put this in their check bag too. I think everyone here knows what that was banned in. Liquid. <laughs> if you can spill it, spread it, spray it, pump it, or pour it, and it must be smaller than 3.4 ounces or 100 milliliters, it needs to be in a one quart size bag in order to go through the checkpoint. But this item's pretty interesting though. Um, it's not actually a bottle of wine. It contains motor oil that was bottled in San Francisco during the US oil crisis in 1973 when petroleum seemed just as expensive as a fancy bottle of wine. And it's an obvious gag gift, but unfortunately it contains too much liquid to be allowed through a TSA security checkpoint. And not to mention, last time I checked, motor oil is flammable and is no way allowed on a plane. Yeah, that is 100% a no-go. Yeah, but what's wrong with these? Wow. I like those on you. (laughs) Well, anything that could be used as a weapon is prohibited. I mean, look at those spikes. Every state has their own penalties and regulations in place, so it's important to know where you're traveling to and from. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't want to get punched with these. Or punched with these either. That just looks like a normal umbrella. Yes, but it has the brass knuckles at the bottom, which makes it a weapon. Well, why do these look different? So if you look on the top, it actually doubles as a taser. Oh my. (laughs) Can someone explain to me what's going on over there? Ah, the Freddy Krueger gloves. <laughs> Obviously, there are hundreds of Comic-Con events across the country every year, and thousands of people put on their very best cosplay in a tin. This person wanted their outfit to be more authentic than most and equipped blades to the glove. But this is definitely something that should have been in their checked bag. Well, that makes sense, but um, what exactly is wrong with these? So pull the cap off. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> um, why would anyone try to bring this on a plane? Yeah, but check this out. I don't understand why anyone would think that's okay. So I can understand not knowing that your meat tenderizer wouldn't be okay, but that is next level <laughs> thinking. TSA has spokespeople who work with local news outlets to educate the traveling public about what they can and cannot bring. Luckily, one of them is able to join us today. Everyone, please say hello to Lisa Farbstein, TSA spokesperson for the Northeastern region. Hi, everybody. Good to be here today. Hi, Hi Lisa. Lisa. Hi there. How long have you been with TSA? I've been here with TSA for 12 years, and I have seen more prohibited items than I could <laughs> ever imagine. What's that? Uh, this is a billy club, something you might have seen in a mobster movie. That's whack. (laughs) So Lisa, we've been talking. How does someone think that these things are okay to bring through a checkpoint? Well, for the most part, people think that 
they can bring these things or they forget that they have them with them. And that's what's uh, so unusual, I think, is that they're not really thinking about it. Now, there was the instance where some guy hit a, a gun in a raw chicken. Of course, we caught that. But that's just a whole nother story. So what you see for the most part here, pocket knives, all sorts of knives, pocket knives especially. So for example, when I get ready to go to work every day, I put on a wristwatch. Some people put uh, a knife that has a clip onto their belt or in their pocket. Here we have a folding knife with the clip and the person who owns this just needs to remember that's the day they're going to the airport. So maybe they want to put that in the check bag or maybe just leave it at home on the dresser. Now, what's important to remember is that when you come to a checkpoint with a prohibited item, you know, whether it's a knife like this, whether it's a hatchet, check that Please. out, that uh, the TSA officer is going to give you uh, options. You can hand it off to a non-traveling companion. Some airports have mailing centers, so you can mail the item to your destination or back to your home. Uh, you can put it again, something like this, in a check bag, and your last option is to voluntarily surrender it to TSA. We call that VAP, or Voluntary Abandoned Property. But pretty much everything you see here probably would be okay to put in a check bag. Now, we know that people also will put things uh, in their wallet now. That's something we're seeing a lot of. This is a credit card knife, why don't we show that? Uh, and the credit card knife, of course, fits right into your wallet. Now, when you unfold it, it creates its own handle. This is a razor sharp blade. Let me show you. See, now, you certainly don't want to be sitting next to a person who has that at their fingertips. And I think that most people don't realize as well, they cannot bring most tools. So tools like these, you know, they're seven inches or larger. And if the tool is seven inches or larger, then it has to go into a check bag because they could be bludgeoning instruments. This is heavy. Like that. <laughs> really heavy. <laughs> now, why would somebody even consider bringing something know. that heavy? Uh, it, it's, 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 it boggles the mind, quite frankly. <laughs> so, and if you're ever unsure whether you can bring something uh, in a check bag, carry on bag, either or neither, you can find that on our homepage, tsa.gov. So, in the upper right hand corner of our homepage, got that handy feature can I bring? Type an item, it lets you know right away where you mm. should pack it. Sometimes it tells you you can't pack it at all. Sparklers. Sparklers are flammable. It's a good example of something. Don't even pack it. Don't even bring it. But, you know, other items, you know, you can take a picture of the item and you can send it to us on Twitter at STSA. Here's a good example because I wouldn't even know how to describe what that is. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, and we see all sorts of things. Um, you know, here's something else that's a little unusual, but definitely a deadly weapon. So take a picture of it. We have a very active social media team. Uh, again, we're on Twitter at STSA. We're on Facebook Messenger. You can also uh, text us a question. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep that in mind. Just ask us, uh, and we're happy to let you know where it should be packed. Is that a cane? Oh, yeah. Here's a good one to show you. This, indeed, is a cane. And check that out. Oh, God! <laughs> yes, yes, here. Check that out. Ooh. So what we advise, if, if you have a cane and maybe you got it as a gift, maybe you got it at an antique shop, at a garage sale, uh, at, at, you know, at any place like that, what you want to do is twist and inspect. So that way, Ooh. if it's got something in there, a dagger, a cane, uh, you'll know before you get to the checkpoint. In some states, that's illegal and you could get arrested. In other states, you're just going to have to probably abandon that sort of item. So keep that in mind. I'll be careful next time I go thrifting. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your box of treasures. My pleasure. Is there anything travelers should know before boarding a plane? I think it's important to know that when you know you're traveling, when you're packing for your flight, especially your carry-on bag, empty it out. I can't tell you what I put in my handbag two weeks ago. I throw stuff in there all the time. So I empty it out and I start packing from scratch. That way I know there's nothing in a little zipper pocket, there's nothing in a little Velcro uh, area. And that's the best thing to do is start with an empty bag when you pack. Thank you so much to Lisa and to the team for joining us for today's episode. If you have any items you'd like to donate to the TSA Historian Program, please reach out. And to see all of our episodes, please visit TSA's YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.